Well, 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 welcome back, dear memory card loving people, photography loving people, vlogging people, it doesn't matter at all. It's boiling hot outside, it's summer, 35 degrees Celsius, or if you live in a country with fragile democracy, about 100 Fahrenheit. In today's video, the Canon EOS R7, some burst shooting test with really fast memory cards, so stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, let's have a moment or two to get familiar with the Canon EOS R7, or yeah, at least the memory card side. The camera is equipped with two SD card slots. Both of them are capable of using UHS-2 memory cards. The cards with, you know, let's see, focus, yeah, with two card, uh, with two contact rows on the back. And the controller in the Canon EOS R7 is fast, maybe even faster than fast, at least for an UHS-2 card controller. Unfortunately, there is no CF Express Type B card controller in the Canon EOS R7, something I really hoped or let's say wished for. Why you're asking? Let me explain. I will use the mechanical shutters so you can at least hear something is going on inside the camera. So 15 instead of the up to 30 FPS if you are using the electronic shutter. Everything is saved in WAR, not CWAR, just yeah, normal WAR and no WAR plus JPEG. So I think it's a more or less usual configuration. You can hear the 15 FPS, yeah, still sounds amazing with mechanical shutter. And now we are limited by the image or by the memory card and the buffer is full. And you can hear it's not a real continuous speed. Sometimes it's, yeah, it's a fast burst and it's a couple of seconds you have to wait. And there's you know, this space with a more streamlined performance but lower speed. But my yeah, main point of concern is the really small image buffer inside the camera. If you're using 30 FPS instead of 15, obviously it's filled up much, much faster. So it's about, I don't know, two or three seconds. So not too long. And it's a camera really focused on, let's say, sports photography, wildlife. And I really wished for a larger image buffer or, as already mentioned, and CF Express Type B card controller. Think back for the Canon EOS R3, for example, up to 700 megabytes per second. So it wouldn't be a real limitation for the Canon EOS R7 after all. I don't know why Canon decided to go that way. It's kind of a shame. There's one possible workaround. I will now set up the camera to do uh, the pictures in, yeah, sea war instead of war. So the image buffer will last a lot longer, as you can hear, up to nine, 10 seconds. So yeah, you can hear much, much, much longer. And th that's my recommendation to do with the Canon EOS R7. Just use some of the custom modes here, C1, C2, C3 for burst shooting situations. Set it up to C war instead of war and the image buffer will last much, much longer. Or if you want, just use JPEG, but I think C war is a fine compromise between image quality, capability of doing some adjustments in the post-processing and file size. So I think it's a good fit. But let's talk about the main point of this video. That's why hopefully most of you are here. Which memory card should I buy for my Canon EOS R7, which is the best or fastest memory card, or maybe a good price performance recommendation just in the middle. To make it short, you can use most of the fastest UHS-2 memory cards. Most of them will perform really well. We tested about 90, 95, 90 memory cards with the Canon EOS R7. Check out the results on memorycard.expert, also linked in the video description below. Um, I will use an Sony TUF G just as an example. Yeah, now the Alpha 7 R4 is focusing. Um, to sh yeah, show you again the card speed and start. So we are now back in normal war instead of C war, and that's what you already experienced or yeah, could hear in this video. So about 
240, 250 megabytes per second. It's hard to pin down because the actual speed written on the memory card, it's depending on the file size. So it could also be just 220, 210, or maybe also 260 megabytes per second. If there's a lot of, yeah, a lot going on in your pictures, a lot of noise. So if you test it at home, don't worry if your speed is a bit lower or maybe even higher. That's totally normal. That's up to the memory card controller. But the Sony Tough G is really expensive. You can also use the Kingston Canvas React Plus, one of my main recommendations for the past, I don't know, 12, 18 months or since the card is on the market because it's usually much cheaper than the Sony Tough G. And as you can hear, there's no real speed difference between both cards. You could measure it, but yeah, there's no actual real world performance difference. And that's the same for the top 10 in, in our measurements. The difference is between, I don't know, 230 to 250 megabytes per second. So maybe half a frame more per second you can get with the real fastest UHS 2 SD cards, but that's about it. But if you say, okay, I already spent a lot of money for my Canon EOS R7, I'm on a budget and I don't want to spend too much money on a good UHS 2 card, let's take the Lexa 1100X for example. It's kind of an entry-level UHS-2 card, or let's say more kind of a mid-range UHS-2 cards, so still two contact rows on the back, but far less pricey than the cards before. And yeah, we are in the image buffer, 15 frames per second, and you can hear now it's a bit slower, but let's say if you're doing, yeah, just here and now some burst shooting, it's totally fine in, in my opinion, and as mentioned, it's much, much cheaper. So that would have, for me, a card to go, or let's say also the Pro Great Gold series. Yeah, now it's focusing. Yeah, so if you're really looking for a good price performance recommendation, I can only recommend to you. Check out memorycard.expert or the link in the video description below. There's an updated price performance recommendation every hour based on the actual prices on Amazon, Adorama and Co. So check out the website if you want. And let's say you want to take some videos with the Canon EOS R7 as well. That's a not too pricey hobby either. So if you're just taking 4K video, regular 4K video, Pay attention to the U3 or V30 speed class on your memory cards, that's enough. And yeah, every better UHS-1 SD card supports those speeds nowadays. If you want to use the HDR PQ or 10-bit recording, you must buy an V60 or V90 memory card like on those pro grade card here, it's a V60 card or a V90 card like the Kingston or Sony Tough G I showed you before. That's totally fine for the highest quality in video mode with the Canon EOS R7. But as mentioned, if you're just doing normal, regular 4K video with up to 60 FPS, you can also use an U3 memory card. So that's not too pricey after all. My final thoughts on the Canon EOS R7 or at least on the memory card part of the camera. It's amazing for me how fast the memory card controller became in the last couple of years. So I don't know, 10 years back SD cards were 10 times slower than nowadays. So be thankful for it, but I really, really wished for an CF Express type B card controller or at least a larger memory buffer for the Canon EOS R7 because it's a real sports wildlife beast with up to 30 FPS and a great image sensor. So please Canon, if you're listening for the uh, EOS R7 Mark II, that bit would be a nice improvement. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or enjoyed this video, find it helpful, please leave a thumbs up and maybe consider to subscribe for the channel. It would be really amazing. And as mentioned, check out memorycard.expert, our website where we tested many more cameras and many more memory cards with the EOS R7 as shown in this video. And yeah, as I also mentioned, you will find updated results or price performance recommendations every hour. So it's a really great website and maybe share it with your photography and videography.
friends. Thanks for watching, see you next and goodbye.